Hey there, welcome back to SimTech channel. In the second tutorial on how to set up a bi-directional communication using two nuclear boards, basically using the UART uh, communication protocol. So in the previous tutorial, we went into length uh, detail explanation on how to configure the Cube MX for these two boards and configure the code that basically control this communication send, receive, transmit, and receive. If I disconnect uh, the power, obviously uh, no one is going to continue talking because we've cut off the transmission line. And if I reconnect uh, the power, obviously the board is going to boot up. And welcome to SimTech channel. Please subscribe and like if you find this tutorial useful and automatically we've got uh, communication going on. I've already explained what's going on here. Basically, the slave board send and the data, the master added to and send it back and the slave receive it, send it back and back and forth. As you can see, the numbers are updating. Great stuff. Now, I pose a question on wh what to do in terms of this variable, which is a 255 max decimal 8-bit uh, variable that is overflowing. What's the solution here? Should we increase the size or should we set up a flag to basically reset uh, if this variable to zero once it reaches a certain value? Anyway, you can drop a comment in the comment section if you have a suggestion for that but for now what we want to do in this tutorial we want to give some control into the master board now as we already know that this is a UART communication so there is no master and slave like in SPI so both of these devices can act as master and slave but uh, right now we are using the F33 board as a master so we want to give this board some control over the communication so as you've seen as soon as I reconnect the power the communication already start because uh, this guy once he come back online the first thing he does is to send and this guy the first thing he does is to read what been sent and once you read what's been sent, you send back a response. That's why as soon as we connect the power, the communication already start. But now we want to add some control over this communication here. So that even though we can disconnect and connect the power back, we still want to enable and disable the communication. So we're giving that to the master. But now to do that, we're going to configure this button here. Right now you can see it's not doing anything. We want to configure this button uh, to handle an external interrupt so that when we press the button, we're going to basically set a flag that will either stop the communication or enable the communication. So stay tuned until the end of this tutorial. So you're going to see how we're going to implement uh, this quick fix onto our code. Great. Now, the first thing we're going to do uh, to add some control here is to head over to the... Uh, IOC file cube MX and once you are here this is what we have currently and I went ahead and basically uh, disable USAT 2 on both uh, nuclear boards because I was using it while developing the the communication for debugging so if you do not have an LCD you can set up USAT 2 to basically see uh, what's going on the communication between the two board basically via this line that's have disabled also please watch a uh, tutorial one part one of this tutorial so that you can see what was going on there and that is because you start to have a usb to serial uh, converter in that you can use party or to write term to basically see the data being transmitted so now what we're going to do is to enable uh, the button that is connected on PC 13. Okay, so we're not going to enable it just as an input. We're going to enable it as an external interrupt. Great. Now, once you've got that enabled, the next thing you need to do, go on system core, click on GPIO, and you need to find the interrupt, right? You see external interrupt 1510. Just enable it, okay? That basically all you need to do 
right now here and we're going to basically generate the code okay give it some time for the code to complete uh, generation great now once your code generation is completed please uh, ensure that your interrupt have been uh, set up uh, you've got the gpio initialization you should have these two lines here that have been added obviously you'll also see that gpio 13 uh, have been added as gpio mode interrupt rising gpio no pull you actually need to add here a pull up depending on your nuclear board configuration here on my on these two nuclear board the default for this button is a pull up okay so i'm going to basically just add a pull up there okay so just make sure which one is the correct pull up or pull down for your particular nuclear board and you should have your nested vector interrupt controller basically these two lines they manage the interrupt so they must be enabled and also if you open the interrupt source code here double click on it you need to ensure that right here at the bottom you're going to see this uh, function here basically the external interrupt handler which is now attached at gpio 13 so that needs to be there if it's not there that means something wasn't set correctly then you go back to the main function now we need to add the little code that we need to basically to enable the control over the communication between these two nuclear boards so the first thing we're going to do is to add another variable to set a flag basically for transmit enabled or transmission enabled and we're going to set it to be equal to zero okay we're going to set it to be equal to zero so that the transmission doesn't start until we set the flag to be equal to one then we're going to go over to the user code begin zero right here under the callback function we're going to add this callback for the external interrupt and here as you can see as soon as we get an interrupt we're going to come straight in here and if the interrupt is at gpio 13 because the interrupt have been enabled as a global interrupt for all gpio and now we are only interested if it's coming from gpio 13 which is attached to these buttons we're not worried about other interrupt only on gpio 13 and if that's the case we're going to set the transmit enable to now one okay and basically this is a, an xor here so it basically will toggle it so every time uh, we press it it will either change it to a one or to a zero okay and then we're also going to toggle the state of the led just for indication that there's been an interrupt uh, set, there's been a button press and the transmission have been enabled. Right now, we only have one LED, so we're just going to work with that particular LED. But you can add an external LED, configure it, and set it up. That way you can see uh, as you are enabling and disabling the transmission great then next we move into the main function here and under the while loop here so we need to basically nest the if statement inside another if statement so to do that let me just go ahead and replace this code with this code so we basically nested the flag that basically uh, enable the send and receive under the flag that will basically stop the send and receive okay so that basically all you need to do and there is nothing else you need to do here so we're going to go ahead and build uh, this code now this is all going to be happening on the master board we're not changing anything on the slave board okay so let's uh, build uh, let's see where we are building okay great and hopefully it's going to build without any problem here okay great now 
build completed without any issues. That means we've been doing the right things here. Great. Now it's time to upload the code. So let's bring in the USB debugger into the master PCB. There we go. It will basically reset. Welcome to SimTech channel. And by the way, please, if you find this tutorial useful, don't forget to uh, thumbs up and subscribe to SimTech channel. That will be highly appreciated. And also remember, you can join SimTech channel if you have uh, an ongoing project that you want to receive uh, some advice, steps, assistance. You are more than welcome to do so. Thank you so very much for your assistance. So I'm going to go ahead and just upload uh, the code quickly here. And hopefully we are basically uploading the master. Yes, that is correct. It's going to rebuild one more time before it start uploading. Okay. We are uploading. Okay. Basically upload completed. Okay. So now we can test. Uh, now we still have that USB connected because it does uh, cause some disruption sometime. So let's enable. Okay, so now you see as soon as we reset the slave, we stuck at 1 and 3 because the flag is not set to basically send. So the master basically receive a 1, uh, added a 2, He's now got a tree that's ready to be sent, but he cannot send it because the transmission is not enabled. So I need to enable the transmission. As you can see there, as soon as I enable the transmission, there we go. The communication is going. So that is the control that we've just handed to the master. So the slave can initiate a conversation, but he cannot continue talking. The master now got the control to say, whoa, 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 you can stop now. Okay, when he press this button, okay, you can see we've paused the conversation. Okay, paused and it's not blinking anymore this side as well. And we can enable it again and we're going to continue where we left off. So this is basically what we've done here, adding uh, the extra control. Obviously, there are various ways you can do that. You can also give the same control to the slave device because remember, this is a bi-directional communication. So any one of these two can put a post to the conversation. So you just need to uh, code it. So let's remove the USB. Okay, that always causes disruption. So now I'm going to restart and reconnect the power. Now, as soon as the device boot up, it's not going to start a conversation because the flag is set at zero. We need to enable that flag first, right? As always, we're getting a one and three. So we need to authorize the conversation. Then the conversation can continue. So now this is obviously this is a simple example. You can enable this flag remotely okay you can have a remote uh flag set via the cloud you can send via your cell phone an instruction to basically set this flag and to continue the communication there are just a lot of things you can do with what we've just done here so thank you guys for watching if you have any suggestion for further optimization of this tutorial let me know in the comment section and as always if you find it useful don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up and share to your social media network. Until next time, cheers.